Hey guys, how we doing? It's uh, Sunday night, about 6.30 or so. Spent a couple hours on that, uh, hold on a second, Tui. Dog hair. <laughs> uh, I spent a couple of hours on the, uh, the Westie as far as just kind of get it, getting to know it a little bit better. Um, making a shopping list of some stuff that I need. I pull the wheels off, brakes, you know, drums, calipers, yeah, what, squeeze them back, that kind of stuff. I uh, changed the oil on it. Uh, still don't look at me. Look at the. We'll look at the uh, the bus when I got tore apart. Um, let it heat up one more time, and I uh, put the light on. Did an oil change on it. Uh, again, it's been sitting for 10 something years and uh, oil filter on it and fired it back up again. It's, it's nice and quiet now. There's no, when I first started running it, the, the lifters were tapping away. And you'd rev it up and it would kind of go away. Uh, now it seems like, uh, yeah, especially after the oil change, uh, it, it's nice and quiet, which is really good. Um, some stuff I need to do. I'll also point at, you can see those. Uh, those brake lines there, brake lines, those fuel lines on the fuel rail, those uh, shitty ass clamps that are ready to fail. So all that stuff's got to get replaced. I'm going to get about 10, 20 feet of fuel line and um, redo all the connectors and get the correct clamps for them all. Uh, it is a fuel injected beast, so they need the, uh, the better stuff on them and the better line. Uh, better pulling the wheels off. And... Uh, Brake shoes were gone. I should take my drums off. Brake shoes are gone. They're they're right to the uh, to the end there. Uh, they weren't metal to metal, but uh, they had the life's worth. This wheel cylinder's not leaking, but the one on the other side is. So we could do all those at the same time. Uh, this emergency brake cable is frozen. Uh, well, it's not frozen, but it's it's dragging. It's not returning on its own. I could either try to take it out and shoot some oil down it and bring it back to life, or if that's cheap enough, we're just going to get another one. The one on the other side is fine. Uh, some other stuff. There's a bunch of the exhaust doesn't have any leaks on it, but a lot of these flanges, you can see there's there's nothing left of that. There's a not much meat left on the front pipe here. So what I'm thinking of doing is. I'll just cut these bolts right out of it and I'll probably kind of like duplicate just the corners and weld to this mass. I'll clean it up and uh, make myself like three little triangle gussets and just weld them on in place and re-bolt it back up again. Everything seems pretty tough. It's all solid stuff. It's not like it's, it's ready to fail. So uh, it's definitely worth saving that stuff. And I think it's only like two of those. There's one on the cat too if you can see that one. That one's kind of the same scenario too. So. That's kind of what my thinking is there. Pull the front brakes apart, and um, that caliper needed to, um, it was kind of sticking a little bit, so I did the old, uh, unbolted it and uh, kept pumping the pedal until it popped the cylinder. Uh, so it looked pretty, the piston looked pretty good. Uh, one little pit in it, it's kind of funny. With that stuff, it, it, you could have like one little pit or, or nothing at all, you don't even see anything wrong with it, you put it back together and it leaks. It all depends on the seal too. But, but I've taken some of those that, like, there's like no way it, it shouldn't have been pissing fluid out. It, it had like, it was nothing but pits and the thing doesn't leak at all, so. We'll see how we make out on that. This, that, that one's all cleaned up and put back together and scotch brighted uh, inside and out. And uh, put a little bit of brake fluid on it to reassemble it. And just held that one in because I wasn't sure if I was going to have to go pump the one out on the other side, so I needed something to hold it together. I uh, cleaned the rotors up with um, uh, a flapper disc on a grinder, because uh, they were actually in, in quite good shape. You know, you can usually tell by, you know, the rust lines that are shrinking down further and further, but this is exactly where the, where the pad touches. So uh, a new set of pads, they'll uh, set them up pretty good. I just kind of spin them with uh, this guy right here. Just a four and a half inch grinder with a, uh, a flapper disc on it. Those things uh, are nice because they don't um, they don't gouge. And on the back, what I did is I, I just started it up. I put the drums on backwards, and uh, I put it in drive and let them spin. And I just take the grinder and I just work the grinder uh, while it's spinning, probably about 20 miles an hour. 
um, when you do that just be aware and remember you got stuff in the center here that's spinning so two inches out from where you are there's stuff that can catch it so make sure you don't have a any shirt or like a sweatshirt or something that you're working with when you're doing that and then for the inner edge I just had some 80 grit emery and I just kind of held it right there and just kind of cleaned up that furthest in edge what else we got oh the um the gas gauge came back to life I have a feeling that uh you can call me a liar now. It is right at the um it's calling me a liar. Murphy's law. Um it was still in the orange. I'm wondering if the sending unit is just very sitting very low in the tank and uh isn't um, catching it. That's where the reservoir is up there. You gotta pop the top of the dash off and that's where your brake fluid is. Also, there's a that switch for it that, uh, I think it's called the shaker, is right under this thing. So you can just kinda work on the gauges right there. Kinda easy access to them, you know? Reach around. I think the next thing I'm going to do, because now i got to order parts, and there's really not much more I can do. Yeah, this side's done too, same thing. Kind of cleaned up. That piston just squeezed right back in again, that caliper. Uh, the lines look like they're fine. There's no breaks or cracks or anything in them. A little bit of rust, but nothing bad. The hole, actually, the hole underneath of the thing looks really nice. I'll show you. It's just like a layer of undercoating. If you scratch that with your finger, it's just the paint right under it. I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, same thing on this side. Flip the brake turn around, but you can see that uh, this guy's wet. This one's been leaking. So. I wanted to get it so I can kind of roll it around though. Drive it around. So that's why even if I have to take them back apart again, if they don't have the stock, at least I can actually hit the brake pedal and uh, have the thing stop. These two lines right here, they start from there. You notice they can get shittier and shittier. I almost grabbed the exhaust to pull myself along. Those guys, they're the uh, power steering lines, and they look pretty crappy. And then they're high pressure too, you know. One side is anyway, returns not. But there's a, a union right up there. So I'm gonna have to do something as far as fabricating lines or, or cutting them right here and figuring out how to splice into them. I'm not sure yet. But we gotta do something about them. Cause they look like they're gonna fail pretty soon. And other than that, if you look underneath it. I mean, it's dirty, but it's not, nothing's uh, punky at all, you know, except for those two lines. The bottom of the motor's nice and dry. Uh, the heads aren't leaking at all. That's just from me changing the oil today, a little drippy. Yeah. Nothing leaks at all, which is nice. I'm trying to figure out what this thing is. It's a um, something aftermarket. This is the CV joint. There's a tie wrap on it. And if you spin it, they have like, you actually see it right there. I don't know what the hell that is. Like a weight or a magnet. Then they have a sensor on here too. Um, I don't know what, it's aftermarket definitely. My thinking is, I wonder if the cruise control that's in the thing is an aftermarket cruise control and they use that for a sensor. I mean, it's crude. It actually rubs. <laughs> I think the tie wrap's getting loose over time. And it was rubbing on it. I just rip it right off, get it out of there. But 
that's kind of where I am right now as far as the stuff that I'm looking at. I just want to get it so I can start it up, drive it in and out of the garage, work on it when I get a chance. Because if it didn't get off the trailer, you never, you never get to go do anything. So Here's the next thing i got to work on. I don't know how long this video is going. When I first got it, get in it. The battery, of course, is stone dead. And it was all locked. You couldn't get in. And, like, and I was really wrenching on the key on the door. So now, <laughs> whenever you shut the door, you hear it? Just keeps trying to lock and unlock the thing over and over again. So I think I have this the switch. I skewed the switch on the inside of it. And it, it always thinks I'm sitting here with the key. So I got to get in here and take it apart. It was so bad that when it was first doing it, <laughs> the re I heard it at the rear hatch, so I actually popped all the um, the stuff, all the uh, the skin and the fiber and the insulation out of it, and I actually ended up unplugging this one from doing it. And uh, then I went to go shut the slider, and it was still doing it over there. So I think that's the next thing we're gonna go work on after I uh, stop with you guys. You got to time it right too, whether it's on or off. Nope. There we go. <laughs> as soon as you pull the doorway, it stops because the contacts are right here. It does stink in here though. Oh. But that's gonna be like the last thing I, I conquer is gonna be um, tearing the interior apart and cleaning all that and getting all that stuff freshened up. Um, especially if I'm kind of digging into all the other stuff, you know. Got new hubcaps from it for a, a swap meet. Uh, and we got um, new rims for it because the rims are shot. I'm gonna order new tires. Uh, Bus Depot has them on sale for the the correct tires for the um, for the buses in general. It's it's a uh, like a, a load range C tires that they're supposed to have with certain heavy sidewalls and all because of the style that they are. They're uh, 79 bucks a piece, and uh, yeah, you're probably gonna pay pretty good for shipping. But the, the tires alone are 79 bucks a piece, and I have a I have a tire machine and a wheel balancer, so. Right there. I think I paid 200 bucks for this thing. Works good though. Hoffman 40. And um, that is, this is an old Coates 30, 30 I think, 40, 40, I forget. Um, I actually had another one before this. I know I'm going off on a rant. I had another one before this. Um, was a 1010, the old. It kind of was skinny, got fat and got skinny again. Um, I like that machine actually better because of the hold down was uh, it came over the rim and grabbed the rim and then worked its way down where well, this one doesn't do it. It just kind of slaps up down the inside of it, but it, it slips off the tire a lot. But uh, the reason why I got this one was it's got the air blast for filling the tires and the yellow one didn't have that. And that could be a pain in the ass if you're dealing with a lot of old tires. So let's go see what our shopping list is for now. You got, of course, brake fluid, wheel cylinders, rear shoes, front pads, tires, the skylight. Skylight's broke in it. I want to get it so that um, the um, it's weather tight. So once if I have it outside, it's not leaking. Um, to uh, do both emergency brake cables if they're cheap. If not, I'm just gonna get the left side. Uh, need paint for the rims. 25 fuel camps clamps. Nine feet of fuel line, the uh, uh, fuel injection line. Uh, two nut parts and all the belts. The belts that are on there are good, but uh, I'll put new ones on it and um, throw the uh, other ones in it just so that there's spares to go along with it. I'll do the same thing with the cap and the rotor and the plugs. Just, well, unless they're trashed. But uh, it's running okay now, so I'd keep that stuff for spares. So that's where I am. I'm just... Uh, as I said, picking away at it a little, a little at a time, and uh, before you know it, I, I, again, I don't like looking at the whole project at one time. I just kind of um, focus on one thing, get myself to that one level, then move on to the next level. I don't like trying to jump around and do the whole thing. So that's why I'm doing all like all the mechanicals first, and then I'll start getting into um, the cosmetics and getting all the appliances working, and, and uh, the, the pop top needs to be replaced. The fabric's gone in that, so. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching, listening to me blab for a while, and 
kind of makes for a, a nice uh, video library uh, of what the process of this thing is. And hopefully in its future you can kind of look back at it. Um, kind of reiterate for anyone who's watching doesn't know. This is actually for my uh, my parents. I got it for them. I, um, it was in town and um, I kept seeing it just sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. It sunk into the ground where it was parked. And I left a note on the woman's door a couple of times. I'll speed the story up. But um, we, I ended up, um, she finally contacted me when she was moving. And I had picked this up uh, last year, this summer. Yeah, or it's this spring. And um, I grabbed this uh, from her, put it on the trailer. And it was it's a present for my parents to uh, do some traveling in. So that's uh, the, the main goal of where this thing is trying to get to. We're not trying to... Uh, Restore it pretty pretty, uh, although we are going to clean it up, but just enough. It, it's going to be a used camper and uh, used for what it, what it was meant for. So, all right, guys. <laughs> Thanks.